Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another book haul. It's spring and that's my time of year to buy new books. I mean, not that I don't buy books any other time of year, but anyway, spring book haul. Let's delve right into it. I have seven books um, to show you that I bought recently, end of March, beginning of April. Most of them uh, used and the first two um, for reread. I read the book already and couldn't find it anymore. Um, that's what happens when you move around a lot. Somehow, you know, like socks get lost in the laundry, books get lost when you move. I don't know, at least it happens to me. So I rebought uh, Joe Baker's Longbourn, uh, published a couple of years ago. Um, it's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from the point of view of the servants or the downstairs uh, people, so to say. Um, I just recently uh, reread uh, Pride and Prejudice. I will have linked to a review video down below. Beware, I have some uh, critical remarks. I mean, I enjoy reading it, but I have some critical remarks. So if you don't want to hear any criticism uh, on Pride and Prejudice, you should watch the video. Um, and after finishing Pride and Prejudice, I thought I would like to reread, um, you know, the the story from the other perspective, and I couldn't find it, so I rebought it. The other book that got lost in the laundry, so to speak, and that I wanted to reread is Doris Lessing's um, book, The Good Terrorist, first published in 1985. Now, I don't think Doris Lessing needs any introduction. She was a British author. She died uh, 2013, um, and she received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2007. Uh, the Good Terrorist is a political book. Um, our main character is Ellis, a very uh, well-educated, well-to-do middle-class woman in her 30s, bit fed up with her quote-unquote entitled life and she allows a group of revolutionaries or wannabe revolutionaries to squat in her um, house. Um, the revolutionaries first want to join the IRA and then maybe join the Russia and help the revolution there. There's a lot of talk and very little action. Um, I read this book a long long time ago and I wanted to reread because I've uh, I'm into political novels at the moment. Um, it's a quiet book. Um, there is a, it, it's slow pacing in in that sense, quietly um, looking from Alice's point of view into you know the the boundaries between the political and the personal. And Alice, what I remember, um, is not a very likable character. Something, if it's well done, I always enjoy. So I'm looking forward to the reread and I will keep you posted uh, what I thought when I read it. The next book was on my list ever since it came out in 2017, and that's the new translation of The Odyssey done by Emily Wilson, um, an English uh, scholar. It's the first translation uh, into the English language by a woman, not the first translation by a woman, as you can read at places, because there have been translations into other languages by female translators, but this one is the first into English. Um, I was uh, I reread the Odyssey last year uh, in the uh, De Rieu translation, which is um, a, a prose translation. So the poem is uh, transformed into into prose. I, I really enjoyed it, but I wanted to read. Um, another uh, translation where the the poem structure, the, so the verse structure, um, is uh, kept, but the old translation just they didn't they, they didn't appeal to me. So when I heard that Emily Wilson uh, had a new translation, I was immediately intrigued. Um, and I will leave, for those of you who might be interested, I will leave a link to um, a YouTube video down below in which uh, Emily Wilson talks about why she decided to translate the Odyssey, even though there are gazillions of other translations in, in, in English already, and how she uh, went about to translate it. Um, I, and I found her approach fascinating, first of all, because she uh, kept the verse but she also tried not to be pompous in her language because, according to her, that doesn't uh, suit the original. The original isn't done in a pompous uh, language. And she also uh, has the, the exact same line numbers as the original. 
So I, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm buddy reading this with Lukash over at Totally Pretentious. Um, and I hope you are subscribed to his channel already. If not, I will leave a link uh, down below and please go check him out and subscribe because he's really wonderful. Um, he reads a lot of classics um, and he has this really engaging, very informal way of talking about his reading. So please go and check him out if you haven't already. So we are budding reading this. We started the 1st of April and we have just finished the introduction, quite lengthy introduction and translator's notes, almost over 90 pages in which Emily Wilson explains a bit of the background and how uh, she approached um, the, the poem. And now we start with the actual poem and I'm really looking forward to this. The next book is one of the two books that I bought new and that is Jamie Quattro's uh, debut novel Fire Sermon published last year 2018. Um, I'm reading this for the Booktube Prize. I'm a judge in the quarterfinals. Um, if you don't know about the Booktube Prize, it's a prize, a new prize organized by a booktuber, Robert from Bader Hortz. Uh, I will leave a link down below to the playlist where you find his announcement and you know, all the videos relating uh, to the first round. Um, basically, he, he picked all the books that uh, were eligible, so published in a certain range between the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019. Um, and then uh, there are various rounds, six books in, in groups, and people who judge them have to rank them, and then the books who rank in the first three move on uh, to the next round. So in the quarterfinals, I'm in a group where I have to read six books, four of which I have already read. I will make a video about it later on uh, when we are done judging the quarterfinals. And Fire Sermon is one of the books that I haven't read. Um, same, uh, Jamie Quattro is an American author. She lives in Georgia. She has published um, a short story collection before, so it's not a day debut debut but it's her first novel and um, we follow um, a, a, a book is set in Nashville if I'm correct yes and we follow Maggie a very uh, devout religious woman a married woman um, uh, who falls in love with a poet and the story takes off from there. That's basically all I know. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the book prize, a uh, book two prize anyway, and to judging. So this will be one of uh, my, the first books I will read new now for the quarterfinals. The other book that I bought new is this one, Emily Bitto, The Strays, published in 2014. And I'm reading this for Aussie April, of course. Um, if you're not familiar with Aussie April, it's a read-along, a read-a-thon organized by Jacqueline over at Six Minutes for Me and Doris from with a, from all the books. My goodness, I need some coffee, obviously. <laughs> and it runs through the whole month, month of April, uh, and we are encouraged to read um, Australian authors. And this book, uh, I will leave a link to the to announcement videos uh, down below. I also made a video about Aussie crime last Sunday, so you might want to check that out if you uh, want to participate in Aussie April and read crime. Uh, but anyway, i leave a link to uh, the prompts also down below. And this book fits two prompts because it's a, an Australian author that I'm meant to get to. And it's also uh, one of the Stellar Prize authors. Uh, it won the Stellar Prize in 2015. Um, now, this is a debut novel. Um, Emily Bito, um published writing in, in journals and magazines. And if you want to believe Goodreads, she also owns half of a wine bar, which I think is fascinating. Um, the Strays is set in the 1930s and 40s in Australia and centers around the friendship between two women. Lily, who is eight when she first meets Ava. Um, and Ava is from an unconventional background. Her father is an, a famous or rather infamous uh, painter. Um, and the book uh, then follows the, the, the friendship of the two women, how they how the friendship develops. And if I understand it correctly, Lily looks back in time. So it's a, it's a book um, that uh, is more... Uh, you know, a reflection on what happened. And I, I, meant, I ha meant to read this book 
ever since it won the Stella Prize. And now, thanks to Aussie April, thank you Jacqueline um, and Doris, I will finally get to it. We return to the used books, and the next one is The Good Muslim by Tahmima Anam, first published in 2011. Um, Tahmina Anam is a Bangladesh author. Um, she was born in 1975, um, and her first book, her debut novel, Golden Age, um, is the first one in this series, the Bangladesh series. And I really, really enjoyed that book. It's set uh, during the war, 1971 war in Bangladesh, centering around a mother, uh, Rehana, I think, excuse me for the bad pronunciation probably, and her children. And this book up this book picks up the family story um, in 1984, so um, 13 years after the war, and then centers around two of the children, Maya, who became a doctor, and her brother Soil, who was um, also quite had quite revolutionary ideas, but when Maya now re-meets him, he has become very devout and very religious. Uh, moreover, he has become a religious leader. Um, I'm very much looking forward to, you know, uh, continuing with this family saga. Um, I, I obviously haven't read the book yet, duh, but I think um, the even though it's a series, there's a, a third book also in this Bangladesh series, but I think you can read it as a standalone. It's not a series in which you need to start with the first book in order to understand the second, but I'm not 100% sure. And anyway, Golden Age is a really, really uh, nice book, so you might as well start there. And I'll be reading the second one, finally. And the last one in this spring book haul is The Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison, first published in 1977. Now, like Doris Lessing, Toni Morrison does mean much of an introduction. She's also a Nobel Prize for Literature winner in 1993, one of the most beloved, I would say, African-American uh, authors. And I read Song of Salomon quite some time ago. Um, and this book, no, it didn't get lost in the laundry as well. It was in my mother's library. So I uh, wanted to buy this f uh, for myself. Also because it's the April read for a read-along that I'm hosting, The Nobel Women. Um, I will leave a link to the Goodreads group down below if you are not familiar with this read-along. In short, we are reading uh, a book by a female Nobel Prize for Literature winner each month. We started in November and we will go through uh, September and there's a bonus read if uh, the Nobel Prize for Literature goes to a female writer this year. And we have a double chance because there are two winners that will be announced this year because there was no uh, uh, winner last year. Anyway, so the Song of Solomon, I picked this one for our Toni Morrison read um, uh, because it's one of her most famous books, I, I, I believe. Um, it, it's about uh, one man's journey um, to find his roots and to find his purpose in life. Um, the, the, the protagonist is, in the beginning, not a very nice man. He's wealthy, but he's egotistical and like his father, only um, trying to increase his wealth. But he goes, of course, on through a transformation and a spiritual journey. Um, he has to find a treasure, and uh, he also traces his family history back to the Solomon, King Solomon. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to talk much about this, because as always with the Nobel Women, reads, I will make a, a full video review uh, at the end of the month. Uh, but like I said, the pick for April, if you want to join, go check out the Goodreads group uh, and uh, get yourself a copy of Song of Salomon by Toni Morrison. So these were the books I bought in spring. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments, as always, whether you read any of the books that I bought or whether you're interested in them or whether there are any books you bought recently that you're really excited about. And I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.